everyone, and welcome to The Daily Head, where we give you the latest esports news. I'm Sierra. And I'm Dom. In our coverage today, we're going to be looking at the results for the LEC Round 2 playoff matches alongside the LCS semifinal results. Before we take a look at Overwatch Stage 2 Week 1 results, and finally, some StarCraft and PUBG. It's a full day today. Starting off with some League of Legend action, the LEC has their round two matches for their playoff run. Fnatic and Splice started off the weekend with the favorites in the series being Fnatic. Everyone wondered if a certain champion would play a huge role in this game. Yeah, everyone had their eyes on Kale for the course of this series. That's what everyone was expecting. It's been peer, uh, popping up in the LPL. But in that first match, we didn't quite get a chance to see that as Fnatic and Splice came in strong with aggressive picks. However, that Kale ended up being banned. On the Fnatic side, the Karthus jungle made its way out yet again. Those Splice came prepared, and again, they did ban that Kale from being a winning factor. In the early game, Splice busted through the lanes and started picking off members of Fnatic. The game stayed on Splice's side for a large majority of the match until about the 23 minute mark. Now a dragon fight ensued with the dragon being secured by Fnatic. The fight stayed on Fnatic's side, taking down two Splice members and heading for a Baron pickup. Now, as Fnatic went to take the Baron, Splice jumped in and were able to eliminate four members of the Baron Up team for the cost of two of their own members. At the 35 minute mark, a river team fight broke out with Reckless on a rampage. Four Splice members were eliminated by the end of that fight, and you can see that on your screen right here. That good old fashioned Requiem dropping down for some good damage. Now finally, at the 36 minute mark, Fnatic had enough of an advantage to rush down the Splice base and close out the game with a overall 13 to 11 scoreline. All right, not bad. I guess that focus on Kale didn't really plan at out least the way that they had hoped. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So for the first game now under Fnatic's belt, the questions being asked in game two is if Splice can bounce back with a new strategy. Yeah, and for the second game, Fnatic brought out the Kale this time as it did get through that band phase. However, they also rounded it out with a nice scaling Cho Goth. Splice on the other side answered with Scion, Rise, and Skarner to look for their own picks along with some of that scaling. However, Splice came out strong. They were able to bring the battle to Fnatic by holding down the lanes and picking off kills to strengthen their lead. For the rest of the early to mid game, Splice put on a dominant hold to Fnatic, slowly draining them of their resources, continuing to pick members off time and time again. It wasn't up until about the 21 minute mark where Fnatic were finally able to fight back in a jungle team fight where that Kale came into play, picking up a double kill and Reckless also picking up a few kills of his own on that Tristana, as you can see over there. Now, as the match went on back and forth into the mid game, the bleeding for Fnatic did not stop. And at the 33 minute mark, after a final decision, decisive team fight, Splice were able to take the Nexus, which you could see on your screen with the series going one to one, evening things up as we entered in towards a game three. Wow, that was uh, an intense game and a lot at stake there, slowly, yeah. slowly dying off. I yeah. felt very sad for them. <laughs> with game two now in the books for Splice, it wasn't too hard to think Fnatic can easily bounce back from this, but now since the Kale pick ended up in a loss, as we said before, what other strategies did Fnatic have? Yeah, well, in the champ select for our third game, Splice actually re-banned the Kale, still showing that fear <laughs> over the power for the champion. So banned away, then picked, then banned, banned away in game three. <laughs> um, however, Fnatic was able to go with a more aggressive comp as a result of that, with Jarvan and Lissandra, a surprise pick from Reckless with his own vein, perhaps calling out that old school Uzi card. Now, in the start of the match, Splice tried to keep their momentum from their second match match, but Fnatic took back the lead, reclaimed that momentum, and showed them that Fnatic were in control the entire time. After they managed to take the wheel of that match at the 15 minute mark and 36 seconds, as you can see on your screen, Splice tried to initiate a 3v2 fight, but the fight ended up going south and turned towards Fnatic with a 3-0 and a tower trade. 
For the rest of the match, Fnatic kept the lead, but that didn't mean Splice were out for the count just yet, as the game dragged out until the 40 minute mark, where Fnatic were finally able to put the last nail in the coffin for that game three, taking the Nexus via a backdoor race in which they split past the members of Splice to take down the Nexus. Okay, for the last game, it's do or die for Splice. For Splice, I'm sorry. Fnatic kept their momentum going for game four. The question is, can Splice dig up whatever they have left? I mean, we're, we've got to find out. For the fourth game of the day, Fnatic were looking to put down Splice for good on match point to close out the series. The champion select was expected with both teams bringing out aggressive compositions. Now, Fnatic led the charge through the entire game. Again, that vein being picked up by Fnatic. Uh, the powerhouse, however, in Splice was able to keep them pushed back despite their best efforts to even up the match. It did stay one-sided for the side of Fnatic with, and with one final fight, Fnatic were able to close out the series as a whole and secure their own spot for the semifinals. Wow, wow. It seems like they used Kale as just a distraction. Like this back and forth yeah. caused everyone to kind of. Well, I mean, that's that's the play with Kale right now. Everyone's thinking, oh, she's so strong. She's got so much scaling. You can't deal with her until the late game. But Fnatic showed, hey, that's okay if you get rid of the Kale because we can still play that style with other champions that have been in the game for years. Right. Vayne popping up. Um, very, very strong performance from Reckless overall, but still, it, I, I don't think it was just the Kale that we have to look for. But hey, that's we still have so many more games okay, to cover. Okay, I'm sorry yeah. about that. Before we move on, a quick recap of the second match of the LEC playoffs. G2 defeated Origin in a 3-0 victory. G2 will move on to the finals and Origin will face Fnatic in the semifinals. The LEC playoff will continue on Saturday with Fnatic and Origin. Then on Sunday, G2 will face the winner for the championship. Yeah. So, yeah. The grand prize, yeah, yeah. That juggernaut match was a quick 3-0. We were expecting something a little more <laughs> intense with G2 versus Origin, but 3-0 means that they just get to advance right to those finals and they get that buy to make themselves a little bit easier. But hey, taking a break from League, the StarCraft GSL Code S saw its second semifinal last night with Jin Air teammates Maru taking on Trap. Maru, the current three-time code champion of 2018, that's Code S, looked indomitable as ever, winning the entire best of seven on only four games and in what was nearly record time at that. With all four matches totaling a whopping 42 minutes, each game was swift and brutal, and Maru didn't pull any punches against his teammate here at ESC. We're expecting at least some sort of competition, considering the two players were probably scrimmaging with each other and with the days leading up to this game. But Maru was on a completely different level, finding a spectacular bio and siege timings in every game, striking just hard enough to cripple Trap before pulling back to bolster his forces for the final blow. Despite Maru Trap, the commentators and everyone else in the audience knowing what was going to happen time and time again, Maru shares ruthless, dismantled Trap. What makes it even more compelling is that Maru never overextended and in 42 minutes of gameplay made only one choice that can be considered a mistake. And even then, only in the context of Trap's desperation, when in game four, Trap was able to find a decent opportunity to push back into Maru's base and do some minor damage, but Maru still rebounded like it was nothing and closed the series out just a few short minutes later. Yeah, wow. an absolutely brutal series from Maru. Now, all in all, we are set for a Protoss versus Terran final with Classic challenging the reigning champion Maru, uh, Maru on April 14th at 4 a.m. Eastern or 5 p.m. Korean Standard. <laughs> now, will Classic be able to upset the current champion in his first final in over four years, or will Maru's dominance continue? And this is actually something that sort of crept up a whole lot in games. We saw it with G2 versus Origin in the LEC. We saw it with the StarCraft II GSL Codes semifinals uh, on Friday night. 
blowouts in gaming, when one team is so advanced that they completely dismantle the other team, what, what do you think about blowouts? I don't know. I guess I would have to say it's a great training ground for those unfortunate underdogs that we see yeah. playing. Um, and I would just say that it goes maybe a little too long for me. Yeah. I can't really pay attention to 42 minutes of a, yeah. of a full game. But it is good training, like I said. Of course. I think and it's good for the underdogs. There, there's also the potential for a comeback. When right. you're playing a best of seven and one person goes three and zero, that last game, you're like, oh no, the fourth guy, he's uh, the, the last match, he's already lost, he's got nothing in it. That's usually when you see, has he got the fire? Has he got the passion to reset and rebound and try to get the reverse sweep? Uh, which narratively can be compelling, but then you get games that are like Maru versus Trap, <laughs> which is just a 4-0 stomp. Which lasts forever. And yeah. you were mentioning to me as well, like in blowouts, we're able to advance a lot further because yeah. of the incredible losses. Exactly. Uh, hopefully you get a chance to learn mm -hmm. from your losses. Um, but still, that's, that's a long way to go. Now turning towards PUBG next, this weekend saw our final set of matches closing out phase one of the European League. For anyone that's even glanced at the standings in the past week, there's been a pretty clear leader in Ents, and we've got to say it wasn't even close with how they closed out week three of this league. Now, Ents closed out their phase one with a whopping 496 points, of which 321 were from kills. That means across 60 matches in three weeks, they earned 321 kills, averaging 5.35 kills per game. I can barely get one. Uh, but special shout out to Rustin Marr, who closed out his season with a grand total of 101 kills. The most kills in the league by, I think he had a lead of about 20 or so above second place in terms of those kills. Wow. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I can't imagine what it would be like to be facing that type of <laughs> battle. I mean, I don't yeah. know. Um, to have an average of five kills per game, it's, that's, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and the fact is they didn't even need to worry so much about getting first, second, and third place finishes because they got so many kills. Um, certainly they did place high as a result of defeating their opponents, but ultimately because there were no opponents left because they killed them all, <laughs> they would end up placing high as a result of it. Okay, regardless. <laughs> Fantastic. So just behind Ents, Team Liquid took second place, maintaining their position in the standings from week two through G2 Esports, dropped down to fifth place overall as Ninjas in Pajamas and Surprise Upcomers Windstrike. Oh yeah, uh, found their momentum towards the end of the season as they found five second place finishes and two chicken dinners. I guess that's a winner. Mm -hmm. uh, to note their first game of the four day weekend has Windstrike as the second team eliminated with zero kills on the board, netting them at uh, zero kills, zero points. But somehow from being the second to the bottom, Windstrike found their inner fire like we're talking about with our blowouts and took the entire PEL by storm, launching from 10th place to the end of week two, all the way up to fourth place by the end of week three. Now that is a comeback. Yeah. That's a comeback. It really is. We gotta talk about the fact that this team was in 10th place. They came into the final week, played one game and got second to last place. Zero kills, zero points, nothing in the standings. And then, what was it, five second place finishes and two first place winner winner chicken dinner <laughs> to win strike to springboard up into fourth. How, if you're the coach yeah. in halftime, wow. you've got all the teams sitting around, there's water bottles, you kick open the door. <laughs> what do you tell your team? I, I know, I mean, if you're in 10th place, it's really hard to imagine that you're going to get any further than yeah. that. Um, I, I guess just put your head down and get going. I don't, I don't know what it would, what it would take to uh, get to the next level, yeah. but it's impressive what they were able to pull together. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I can't really put myself <laughs> in that position because sure. it's hard for me to keep moving when I'm in 10th place. Exactly, and that's why I think we have to look towards the support staff, whoever it was. Right, maybe yeah. it was the captain, maybe it was the coach, maybe it was an analyst who said, look, we're in 10th place, but we're down. 
Right. But that doesn't mean we're out. Exactly. So let's exactly. give them hell, boys. Yeah, let's go. Exactly. Good for them. That's <laughs> yeah. good. No. Now, the PUBG Esports isn't done just yet. Just because the PEL European League is closed out, the PUBG Face It Global Summit kicks off on April 16th. The top four teams from each of the major regions are sending their best and brightest to compete at one of the highest levels of PUBG competition there is, as this tournament is set to give us a preview of who's who in 2019. Which regions should we be watching for when the PUBG Global Championships swing around later this year in November? Now, Windstrike have locked down their spot from Europe in the last place at fourth, and with that, we now have all 24 teams decided for this summit. So keep tuned to PUBG Esports on April 16th for, again, the best and brightest. We're going to be watching here to yes. see how that tournament shakes out as well. Yeah, April 16th. Be there. Exactly. Okay, so moving back to some League of Legends action, the LCS has finished off their semifinal round, and we're here to look at the match that every, kept everyone on the edge of their seat. Before we get started on the Cloud9 and Team Solo mid game, Team Liquid and FlyQuest Quest face off and Team Liquid took the set in a full out 3 and 0 victory. Team Liquid would now head to finals for their third consecutive year. Yeah, very Not good bad. for Team, Team Liquid. Liquid, of course, for the match we all wanted to see the rivalry. TSM Cloud9, it came out in full force. The matches between these two are gonna be something to remember for a long time uh, coming. Now Cloud9 came in confident with their perfect streak against TSM. So during the champ select, the picks that came out were a bit different than we expected. Sneaky and Zazel, Zazel, yeah, Zazel. Zazel yeah. brought two picks and haven't been seen on the LCS recently with the Sonya and Tarek pick. In the start of the match, both teams were watching each other before TSM's bot lane made the first move. Niski. Niski from C9 answered, but the kill of Bjorgensen. Yep. And Akaden took down Niski for a two and one trade. Not bad. Yeah, and it was back and forth all throughout the early game. It was looking to go on in TSM's favor until a Rift Herald fight that you now see on your screen turned the tide towards Cloud9. At the 18 minute mark, that Rift Herald fight ended with Sneaky stealing the objective, taking down the TSM jungler, and with that fight, it allowed Cloud9 to keep making moves against TSM. Now, towards the 26 minute mark, Cloud9 moved onto the Baron, seemingly and quite enjoying their time on this side of the map, though TSM was hot on their tails. C9 secured the Baron buff with a kill secure on Bjergsen, Smoothie, and Sven to have Cloud9 look for the win closing out the game with a grand total of a 5-11 finish. Now, Cloud9 started the series with a 1-0 score, looking to continue that flawless streak against TSM. Now, game one was in the bag for Cloud9. Expectations were starting to come true with TSM losing again. But of course, this is only game one, and the only, uh, the only remaining question for TSM, can they bounce back? Can they bounce back? In the champ select, we see the other half of the Angel Sisters, Morgana for Niski. She isn't reworked but as Kale, but she was spiced up a bit for this game. For about seven minutes into the game, everything went along as normal, and both teams were just waiting to make the first move. TSM attempted to grab an early dragon, only to have, have it taken away by Cloud9, Moriega. Mm -hmm. At 13 minutes, TSM decided on another dragon capture with Cloud9 in the area. Acadian was the one who initiated the team fight that went south, but one TSM member was able to eliminate it and brought the lead back towards Cloud9 with a mid tower push and a Cloud Drake secured. Now, close to the 23 minute mark, TSM and Cloud9 meet in a decisive jungle battle behind that red pit where the game was determined. Uh, for who would officially take the lead. Now, Acadian again forced a confident initiation that went south almost instantly, and TSM had no choice but to commit until they lost two members and retreated. This opened the door towards Cloud9 taking the Baron, and again, moving in to close out the game. However, it took until the 27 minute mark where Cloud9 were able to push through the base with strategic teleports to close out the game with a kill score of 11 and four, reaching match point with a 2-0 series. Still, Cloud9 have not dropped a game against TSM just yet, <laughs> and now they're on match 
point. They're but holding after, strong. Yeah, they are. Uh, yeah. But they just need they need one more. All they need is one more to close it out. After that huge, exciting game, Cloud9, they've got their series in the back. Team Solo made at game point. It's do or die. Their playoff dreams are on the line. They have got to kick it into lo uh, high gear. But then game three happened. And with TSM now on game point, Bjergensen was made the Atomic Flex pick with Alki pick. With everything riding on one match, a Jice and Alki comp were the desperate picks from TSM probably needed. TSM brought the fight to Cloud9 in the early parts of the match, uh, hoping to sway the series' momentum to her side. Of course, Cloud9 wasn't going down without a fight, and even though TSM was holding them, they were able to keep the match from swaying over to TSM. Yeah, now it wasn't until the 30 minute mark where the game finally turned over. A jungle fight was brewing on the side of Cloud9, but TSM's burst and poke melted through their health bars, and the fight turned nasty when Bjergsen cleaned up a bleeding Cloud9 with the help of his four team members, and they were able to eliminate the momentum, and TSM some were the ones who found themselves with an advantage. You can see that gold difference down at the bottom of your screen. Now, two minutes later into the match, another team fight ensued in the mid lane with Sneaky getting caught. He got melted down, even though the Zillion Alt and the Tom Kench were able to keep him alive. Once again, Bjergsen picked him off on that Akali. Zazel and his team picked up two more kills with Niski being the last man standing. Finally, 42 minutes, match point. The decisive team fight came out of TSM with each member picking off the health uh, bars of Cloud9. But it was only a matter of time before Bjergsen came in and initiated the fight with all five Cloud9 members falling to TSM without any casualties. Team Solo Mid moved into the Nexus to close out the game and finally, put themselves on the board. The win streak for Cloud9 had officially ended. Now, the series has reached its breaking point in excitement, but still, it's game point for TSM. They can't make any more mistakes. Anticipation turns towards Cloud9. Can they close this series out? It's match point again, and TSM suddenly have some momentum after that game three victory, 2-1 in the series. Okay, so on to game four with TSM still in match point. The champ select was a little different than we saw in the first three games. Cloud9 has officially banned Jace and Akali. And there's also a face that we haven't seen yet in the North American side of the league. That would be Kale. While on TSM side, they banned out the Morgana and Tarek and the Tom Ketch. Yeah, like all other games, both teams waited it out into the laning phase until one team made the first move, and that team was TSM picking up first blood. Now, for a while, TSM were able to keep their hold on Cloud9 until they decided to fight back at 16 minutes into the game. They managed to initiate a team fight, taking down Broken Blade and Smoothie, but the overcommitment was a cost that Cloud9 could not afford to pay. Ultimately, they lost three members in that team fight, giving TSM the win and control over the river and that dragon pit. In the uh, Baron pit, Cloud9 decided for an all-out Baron assault. Team Solo Mid caught wind of it and committed a team fight, taking the Baron and eliminating three members of Cloud9 and set forth the final push of the game. Now at the 25 minute mark, one last team fight called the game for Team Solo Mid. With Cloud9 still bleeding from that Baron fight, the final siege was too much for them, in which they lost four members and lost Game four to TSM, setting game point for both teams. The ace match, game five, the big decider. Would the reverse sweep happen? Or would Cloud9 finally get their footing and close out the series? Well, TSM taking Cloud9 to game point opened opportunities for the team. But again, one mistake is all it takes from both teams. And Cloud9 had just made the past two mistakes in games three and four. With game five and match point for both teams, the champ select showed everything with and can be described only in a few words. It is an in and all out for both teams with their comps revolving around poke and initiation domination. For 13 minutes into the game, it was pretty quiet. 
as quiet as Cloud9 and TSM can be, that is. But a river finally broke out and the fight went back and forth with Cloud9 eliminating three TSM members while losing two on the other side. Now at the 26 minute mark, both teams met in the mid lane and went for a fight with Zazel making the first move and initiating. However, the fight ended up being just a little bit messy. Cloud9 came out on top with their own two four zero trade. Okay, and so after 10 minutes of game time, the 39 minute mark was the deciding factor for Team Solo Mid. They committed to an all out fight with their members barreled up. It was a huge fight ending with an ace and Team Solo Mid punching their tickets to have a date with Team Liquid in the playoff finals. Yeah, and to see TSM get the reverse sweep, we were just talking a little bit about blowouts a little bit earlier. This is the other side of the coin. You okay. get to match point, you have Cloud9 two and zero, and then you get the reverse sweep. TSM is able to answer back. This is, I think, what we hoped to see in StarCraft, but didn't quite get an opportunity to do. So maybe we have a conversation with the coach of TSM and listen to his halftime speech. Look, we're down, but we're not out. <laughs> We've still got the rest of the season to play through. Now, both finalists have been confirmed. The conclusion of the 2019 Spring Split will happen on Saturday, April 13th, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. This is a match for the ages. Team Liquid versus Team Solo Made. You do not want to miss it. Now, that's been a lot of League of Legends action, but we're still not done just quite yet. No, 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 we are not done. We are far from done. We still have the Overwatch League. We'll look, be looking into Sunday's game as both finalists of Stage 1 playoffs were in this group, and we're looking to see how they performed. How do yeah. you think they performed, Doc? I mean, we're about to find out. Starting off the day, San Francisco Shock, the runner-up for Stage 1 playoff finals, took the Guangzhou charge full force into the match. It was no surprise seeing them come out strong after their previous performance in which San Francisco showed no signs of slowing down and only signs of improvement, which is what we wanted from this team. With the strength they now appear to have, the question remains is how long can they keep their momentum rolling? The San Francisco Shock defeated the Guangzhou Charge 4-0. For the second match of the day, we had London Spitfire take on the Atlanta Reign. With both teams having an even score in the standings, the matchings we saw today were far from even. London Spitfire Fury was the man of the show on the DVA. Fans were a little disappointed when with Atlanta Reign's performance with this match, showing a little bit of weakness in the current standings with their weird swaps and substitutions and play style in general. Um, now let's see how the roster will do without Darfin now. The London Spitfire defeated Atlanta Reign with a 4-0 victory. Right, and for the final match of our Overwatch League coverage, the Vancouver Titans look to extend their undefeated streak. They faced off against the Hangzhou Spark, and with authority, they showed why they were number one in the Overwatch League. The Titans did nothing to back off the Spark team, and without question, they proved that they can adapt to any change in the meta thrown by their opponents. Now questions do raise up to where they're going to be heading in stage two. The Vancouver Titans were, uh, excuse me, did defeat the Hangzhou Spark with a four to zero victory overall. Okay, with week one of the stage in the book, stage two will begin this Thursday on April 11th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Starting off the day, Paris Eternal and Florida Mayhem. Okay, home team. <laughs> New York Excelsior take on the Washington Justice and closing out the first day of the Vancouver Titans will face off against Soul Dynasty. Yeah, and I'm just looking for that Los Angeles team. If yep. you're going to be rooting for Florida, then maybe we'll we'll see what we can come up with. But hey, <laughs> that's it for today's coverage of today. the Daily HUD. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest updates in esports. Once again, I'm Dom. And I'm Sierra. On behalf of myself and the entire esports channel, we wish you good night and uh, GG. Yes.